Welcome to another great episode of Royal Black and Elite. I'm Lady Trinette Wilson, your social historian and lecturer. Royal Black and Elite is a place that I love to just share information that I've learned throughout the years over black history. And it's always neat to find out the wonderful things that the black race did throughout the years. The royals, the blacks, the elites often get hidden in the stories of black history and it's my honor to bring them to you each episode. Now this episode is extremely interesting to me because although I knew about the Underground Railroad when I first started studying uh, to be a social historian, I didn't understand how interwoven and connected the Underground Railroad system was in order to help people. What's more, I didn't realize how integral black people were in moving people throughout the Underground Railroad because most stories tell of the abolitionists being Quakers. So I didn't know that there were all of these other people who really played an integral part. And one man who played a very important part in the Underground Railroad is named William Steele. He's from Philadelphia and we're getting ready to learn all about him. Now listen, if you like what you're learning here, please press like, subscribe, and share if you want to donate to what we're doing and help as we go out and teach the other side of black history, the royal side. I want to thank you for all your donations. I want to thank you for your support. So let's jump right in to this episode. He is known as the father of the Underground Railroad. Mr. Steele was a business owner and abolitionist who went on to become one of the greatest civil rights leaders of his time. The youngest of 18 children, can you imagine? William was born on October the 7th, 1821 in New Jersey to two escaped former slaves. His father, Sidney, and mother, Charity, and listen, Charity escaped two times, and on her second escape, she was forced to leave two of her sons, one of which still met later in life um, as the conductor of the Underground Railroad, and his brother's name was Peter. At 23, Steele left New Jersey and relocated to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where he initially took a job as a janitor. Three years later, however, he became a clerk at the Pennsylvania Society for the Abolition of Slavery, and he was married to a woman who was not only his wife, but would become his abolition partner, Leticia George. They had four children, all of whom which were really amazing. One went on to become a doctor, and she actually, Caroline, was the first black doctor to practice medicine in Philadelphia. One went on to be a lawyer, one became a journalist, and the other a teacher. Steele was a man of iron will and ambition, and it's no surprise that his children were the same, because Steele taught himself to read and write, which helped him build his fortune later in life. So before we get to that, the later in life piece, let's talk about before their Civil War. Steele was the chairman of the Vigilance Committee of the Pennsylvania Anti-Slavery Society. That's the place that he was working. He directly aided fugitive slaves, and he also kept records of the people served in order to help their families reunite. So as a member of the Underground Railroad, people would come to his house, slaves would escape and come to his home, and he would keep the records of what those people told him. Now, his abolitionist work that he was doing with the society really made him feel he wanted to do more. So he did a few things. One was he was the chairman of the Vigilance Committee, and that is where he helped directly slaves who had escaped and they were able to reach Philadelphia. This led him and his wife, Leticia, to move into a relatively large home where they began to participate in the Underground Railroad. It was located at 625 South Delhi Street. The Steels lived in this house during the Underground Railroad at the height of it. And it was, he was a conductor on the railroad and he lived there from 1850 to 18. 
1955. Through his status as the chairman of the Vigilance Committee, Steele was one of the most prominent leaders in the African American community. Now his business also grew as his prominence in the black community grew. His business took off when he became the owner of a cold delivery business. At one time he owned Liberty Hall, which was the largest black owned event hall in the city. That is how he gained the wealth in order to have the row house that he purchased. And it became a major stop on the Underground Railroad. It is believed that he helped 800 escaping runaways on their journey to freedom. Even civil rights leaders like Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman spent the night at the Steele's row house. And in fact, it is also reported that Steele helped finance Harriet Tubman's journey back to the South to free slaves. As slaves stayed at his home, he took notes, and he wrote these notes and published it in 1872 in a book called Underground Railroad. It was the first book published by an African American providing personal accounts of what slaves had actually gone through. Uh, during that time, it is believed he sold 5,000 books. He actually hired agents who went around and sold the books. It went through three printings, and that's why I say it paid off that he learned how to read and write. Find out more about that journey in my book, Royal, Black, and Elite. And before we finish up with Mr. William Steele, I hope you found him interesting. I thought his life was, and when I first thought about really how the Underground Railroad ran, to know that there were wealthy black men during that time who was willing not to only give up their time by being a part of committees, but actually their life and their safety to make sure that African Americans and uh, people who were looking for freedom were able to do so in his home. I mean, it's just an extraordinary man and an extraordinary story. In 1876, in fact, his book was um, displayed or exhibited um, at the Philadelphia Continental Exposition. So after the Civil War, he didn't have to be the conductor of the Underground Railroad anymore, but he was still very active in black issues and black causes. So some things that he did during that time is he worked in the community helping to establish the YMCA. He financed a good deal of that. He established the Sabbath School because he wanted children to learn how to read. And he also established a home of the aged and infirmed colored persons. So his life from, from beginning to absolute end is just a testimony and a testament how someone can give their life over to a cause and how it can become a legacy for them. Because of the Underground Railroad, approximately 100,000 people found their way to freedom. So his role in this was not small by any means. He still passed away in his home after being married so many years to his only wife, raising four amazing children and a lifetime of community service, work, and business. If you're ever in Philadelphia, stop by and see his memorial at 244 South 12th Street. It was erected in 1991 by the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission. So many times we don't know about our history, but today I hope that you learned a little bit more about yours. Now, each week I come and I post a video, and if you like it, you can always like, subscribe, comment, and share. I really need your support, and by you doing that, it shows me that you like what you're learning. Now listen, in September, there's going to be a new movie coming out called Woman King. And I will be doing a live and a review of it. So make sure you subscribe so you can be included in the fun. Lastly, if you want to represent for Royal Black and Elite, we have merch. I'm so excited. When you buy a t-shirt, you make it possible for us to be able to go out to low-income areas and do etiquette classes. Check out what we do at www.nauep.com. And again... And lastly, of course, we have that Royal Black and Elite book. You can go over to Amazon.com and pick it up. 
to have it in your personal Black History Library. Everybody needs to know about Mr. William Steele and all of the things we learn here at Royal Black and Elite. Thank you again for tuning in, and I'll see you in another great episode.